Hey everybody, good morning and welcome back to Gideon's Stuff. Today we have another installment of I EDC'd blank for two weeks. And today the topic is button locks. Button locks have become incredibly popular in the last year or so. Um, maybe a little bit longer than that, depending on when the ProTech Malibu came out, but recently a lot of companies have really been putting forth their own button lock knives, especially kind of in the budget category. We see things like Kaiser, uh, Civivi, CJRB, all dipping their toes into the, uh, budget, the budget button lock category. Um, and it's not like bu button locks are entirely new. The ProTech Malibu was not the first manual button lock. Um, a lot of companies have done button locks in the past. Hogue, for example, has done very many button lock, uh, knives in their in their history but it, it seems like just recently it's really starting to catch on and become pretty popular so as a knife reviewer i had to get my hands on a couple and i had to review them and uh here's my thoughts on button locks so i've carried a bunch recently but i only really have three uh still with me so those are the two sun uh, TS338, a night morning design, pretty cool knife. We have the Civivi Conspirator, pretty cool knife. And we have the CGRB Button Lock Feldspar, a White Mountain Knives exclusive. As is always the case with this series, what I'm going to be talking about is not really the knives themselves. We're just going to be focusing on one aspect, and in this case, it's the lock. So hopefully, I have reviews of all of these knives posted before this video comes out. So if you're curious about my thoughts on the knife itself, you can check out my review. This video, I'm just going to be talking about the button lock. So, how does a button lock work? Let's go ahead and get that out of the way first. You can see here the internal workings of this button lock. When I push this button, it moves that plunge out of the way and allows the blade to close. If we look at this right here, see that area in there? That engages with the button lock and basically traps the blade. It stops on the stop pin and the button lock gets behind it. Kind of the same idea as the axis lock. You know, you have a metal bar engaging with the tang of the knife, you know, to keep it from moving, essentially. Uh, it is different though. A plunge lock, which is another word for button lock, it is different than an axis lock in a couple of pretty key ways. Um, for example, I think the strength of an axis lock far exceeds the strength of a button lock. But that's one of the things that we're going to talk about. So as you see here, this is a very thick button lock. Um, probably the thickest one I've handled. Most button locks are more this sized. So you can see, if we go inside, Maybe you can see that. It's all black. <laughs> Let's see. Eh, maybe you'll be able to see it better with this one. As you can see, the uh, the button itself is not very um, chunky. So, I carried each of these knives for more than two weeks, really. But you know, that's the name of the that's the name I've chosen for this series. So that's what we're going to go with. And I kind of use them in different ways. I use them as just a regular EDC knife, and then I tried to put them through some harder use um, scenarios when I was working on the ranch in the mountains. Um, this knife definitely did handle the hard use stuff best. A lot of that was because I think the construction that they have here is a much more solid knife. But um, I have pros and cons for each of them. So let's go ahead and. Uh, get into those okay there's something I think I need to address and it's fidget factor yes button locks are fidgety as hell um, so do with that information as you need um, they are very fidgety this review is not going to be talking about fidget factor too much. We're going to be talking mostly about um, using it in real-world environments. 
Man, that sounded snooty. Oh well. Let's get to it. So real quick, I want to talk about using, or, or I guess the, the, the operating of a button lock, the um, deployment and such. I prefer, I, I think my, my favorite uh, button lock configuration that I've discovered in all my testing is the thumb stud with button lock. Let's grab one of those. I think the thumb stud with the button lock just works best for me. Um, a button lock does not have a traditional detent, and so, I don't know, I just find it easier to get leverage out of a uh, thumb stud. When we have a flipper tab, and on this Civivi Conspirator, it works, but it's also, you know, there's been times where, you know, in the real world, uh, when I'm using it, where I pull it out and I'd miss a flip, because, you know, it's not a traditional detent, and it does take some getting used to, I guess. So I definitely prefer the thumb stud um, means of operation. And if you want to talk about fidget factor, I think the thumb stud's cool because you flick it open and then your thumb is right there for the button lock. And so, you know, you can have a lot of fun like that. Put that back for a second. Um, but yeah, I definitely prefer the thumb stud. So let's talk about after you've used the knife, putting it away, because... When you're fidgeting with the button lock, I, one of the reasons that a button lock is so fidgety is because, you know, your thumb is right there on the on the button. Go ahead and get sideways to you guys like this. There we go. So you flip it, and then your thumb is there, and you can close it. And that's cool, and that's very fidgety, but that's not really where your thumb is after you use the knife. You know, if you were like this, or like this, you know, and then you've got your fingers wrapped around here instead of, you know, after a flip, your fingers just stay on the side and you can just fidget with it like that. Um, so, I said before that I think button locks work best for left-handed folks. And I stand by that and we're, I'm gonna show you why. So, here I am, I've got my knife out, I'm using it, cutting something. Say I've got my thumb up here on the chimping. When I go to close it, let's turn this way. I've got to move my thumb back to there, move my fingers, and close it like that. And that's not like difficult, but to me it feels like it takes a couple more steps. And of course you can get used to it. You know, after a while, you get used to it. Aww. But it really does just kind of feel like, you know, extra steps. However, if you're left-handed, using it, using it, using it, then you move your finger up when you move all the rest of your fingers out of the way, and it closes like that. I am not left-handed, so I might flub this a couple of times. I don't know if that makes sense, but for me, it definitely, I can tell a difference, you know, when I'm using a button lock knife. And it's kind of the same way with an axis lock too. You know, you got to get all your fingers out of the way and then move up to this position to close it. Whereas with a, a liner lock, which I should grab a liner lock real quick. Good thing I've always got knives close by. <laughs> with a liner lock, you know, you go to use it, using it, and then when you want to close it, it's kind of natural to, you know, your fingers are here. I mean, the blade needs to come through your fingers. Essentially, with a liner lock, the motion that you use to close the knife is the same motion that you use to get your fingers out of the way. So you do turn your, right? You turn the knife, get your thumb there, and it's done. And maybe that's just because I'm more used to uh, liner locks, but with the button lock, 
I found it so much more intuitive to left-handedly close it because, again, when you're left-handed, the motion that you use to get to the button is the same motion that pulls your fingers out of the path of the blade. And when I'm right-handed, it just feels like there's a whole lot more rearranging. And, and, and again, it's not like this makes a huge difference. It's not like this completely slows down the usage of the knife. It's just, you know, something I noticed. And so uh, I want to bring it up because to me it just feels a little off, you know, but that might just be me. All right, let's go ahead and talk my thoughts on using a button lock. And we're going to start with this one because this is the one that I kind of um, use it in a, in a hard use environment. Um, well, actually, no. We're going to have to start with one of the other ones because we have to talk about why I didn't use this one or this one in a uh, hard use environment. Uh, because I tried both of them. And this one, I just kind of took around as kind of my lunchbox knife and it, you know, wasn't, I, I didn't really do that much with it because I wasn't impressed with what happened with this one. So what kept happening with this button lock is, you know, I'm working in the woods, doing cowboy stuff, I'm building fences, I'm chasing cows, I'm doing all this stuff. It gets dirty, right? And I've said this before, but it, when you're working in a dirty environment, the worst place your pocket knife can be is in your pocket. That seems a little bit counterintuitive, like, isn't it safe there? The answer is no. When you have your knife out and you're using it, it's a lot safer than it is when it's in your pocket. Because dust gets in your pocket. Dust and tiny pebbles and dirt and grime, it all gets in your pockets. And when your knife is in there, it's just bouncing around with your knife. So what I started noticing, was this knife was just getting gummed up. And so what would happen is I would flip it, I would go to flip it open and either it was locked shut because there was so much grit in there in the in the plunge or it would open but it wouldn't lock up because the button would get stuck in the down position because again, grit and grime. And that got to be really frustrating. And uh, it got to the point where I realized this lock it is not a viable, it's not a viable option for out here in the woods. And so I stopped carrying this knife. However, I did not experience so many issues with this one. And if we look in there, we can see it's pretty dirty in there. But for some reason, I'm not sure what they did differently here. It's just a more solid, uh, system, I guess. It's more solid lock, but you can see get that sun in there. Uh, maybe not. But you can see, like, it is pretty dirty and gritty and stuff in there. But it still functions. So, there we go. Um, and uh, so I started taking this one to work. And I liked it in a lot of ways. Um, it was pretty easy to use with gloves because of these huge thumb studs. And also the button being as big as it is, let's compare that button to that button. It was easier to actuate with my gloves. And then I discovered a new problem. So there came a point where I was making something, I can't remember what it was, but I was using some kind of thin uh, whippy uh, willow shoots. And so I, I cut them out and then I was doing a draw cut towards me. I was making slivers. What was I making? I can't remember. I might have just been testing. But I th no, I was doing something because I was at work. I didn't have the camera going. What was I doing? Not important. <laughs> but so anyways, I'm pulling like this, doing these kind of, these types of cuts. And of course, I'm not like up here like this. I'm just doing, you know, that for the camera. You know, I'm, I'm down here. And I was pushing the button and disengaging the knife on myself. And that got to be very frustrating. And the other thing I noticed too was if I grabbed the knife like this and I went for some hard pushes, you're holding, when you're going for like a, a push cut like this, holding a knife like this, and let's say you've got, I don't know, a piece of thick cardboard, or you're pushing down on pallet straps, or you've got a piece of wood and you're, you know, gouging a knot out of it. Guess where your thumb is? 
right there on the button. And so I found that I was just constantly disengaging this knife on myself. And that wasn't great, obviously. I mean, that's kind of a big issue that the last thing you want to do is hurt yourself while you're trying to, to work. So that got to be pretty annoying. I do want to say, though, you know, for the light duty EDC, no problems. I, I kept my thumb away from the button and uh, it, it worked just fine. On this knife in particular, I found it pretty hard to accidentally disengage this button. It's kind of scooped out in the middle. It's got this little bit of a recess around it. And so I didn't really accidentally disengage this knife very much at all. So I really appreciated that. However, if you are going to be using your knife in a dirty environment, or if you're going to be using it hard, I don't really recommend button locks. They just seem pretty, you know, they get gummed up easy. You can accidentally disengage them on yourself. It's not good. And the other thing too is, I'm not sure exactly how strong the lockup is. And this is, you know, this is something that, you know, again, with basic EDC may not be an issue. But, you know, like on this knife here, there's just a spring on the other side of this plunge pressing against the micarta. And if you guys have seen my Kaiser Beglider XL video, you know how many times that knife failed on me. So there are some trust issues between me and button locks. Real quick, I wanted to say, um, if you want to see more of me using knives, if you want to see uh, some of the situations that I um, use my knives in, gosh, I'm so good at English, uh, follow me on Instagram at Gideon Stuff. Obviously, I cannot film every single cut I make with a knife to put on YouTube, but I often take pictures of uh, things I do at work or, you know, just in my everyday life, and I post on Instagram so that you guys can see uh, these knives kind of in action. So if that's of interest to you, go ahead and check out my Instagram at Gideon Stuff. Uh, we do all kinds of cool stuff over there. Knives, geology, paleontology, good stuff. So check it out. So at this point, you might be thinking that I'm a button lock hater. And maybe I am. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, in all seriousness, let's talk about what I actually do like about button locks. Uh, the fidget factor is cool. I'll give them that. Um, but I always appreciate a lock that promotes, you know, getting your fingers out of the way to close. You know, it's just safe. Um, so that's cool. Uh, I do think the... I do think a button lock adds a little bit of a cool of cool factor to a knife, um, and maybe that'll wear out as they become more and more widespread and people just get used to them, I guess. But, you know, they are fun. They are fun. They are cool. As far as just regular EDC goes, um, I don't really mind them at all. In fact, uh, this knife here, my CGRB Feldspar button lock, I've been using it, you know, back in college and stuff, and I don't really see a difference. You know, I'm not putting this knife through anything hard. I'm not cutting as much stuff as I do when I'm on the ranch or at work in the summers. And so, you know, as far as just a, a, a kind of basic EDC knife goes, uh, yeah, button locks work just fine. I don't really have a, I don't really have a problem with them. But let's go ahead and wrap up this video. What are my thoughts on button locks? Overall, while I think they're cool, while I think they, you know, are definitely, you know, regardless of what I think, they're definitely in style these days. But I'm just not the biggest fan of button locks. Um... They just, I, I, I feel like there's, and to, to me, I feel like they don't have very long lifespan. Again, check out my Kaiser Beglider XL uh, review. I talk about a lot of the problems I had there, but I'll sum up a little bit here. That knife kept locking up on me. It kept getting to the point where it wouldn't lock up. It would fail on me when I was just cutting through cardboard and 
Well, the last time I took it apart, I found that, you know, that spring that's pushing in on the micarta, it's, it was just like wearing this little dent into my car. So the spring wasn't sitting perfectly straight anymore. It's kind of sitting in there like this a little bit. And, you know, maybe that was causing some issues. I just don't feel like a button lock is super reliable. And then that's not even the right word because it, it's difficult to say because, again, for just basic EDC, you know, cutting my sandwich every once in a while, cutting some strings, a little bit of cardboard here or there, you know, something like that. Um, I don't have a problem with a button lock at all. No problem whatsoever. But for prolonged use, for heavy duty use, for dirty use, I just really have a hard time getting behind a button lock. I, I know there's uh, like, um, oh, what's, ADV knives, I think is what it is. Makes a lot of those really big, robust, overbuilt button locks. Hogue makes a lot of kind of dirty or hard use, like tactical button locks. And I would kind of like to try some of those. Maybe there, you know, maybe there is a difference. But from my experience with what I've used so far, button locks are definitely fun. They're fidgety. They're different. Um... But I don't really see any reason why I would choose a button lock over any other lock. And I'm going to sound very negative and very... I'm going to sound like a downer on this. And I don't mean to. Like I said, I don't really... I, I don't have a problem with button locks on EDC knives. But I'm just not a button lock fan. You know, I think they're cool... But I really do think that they are uh, maybe not not perfect. So, anyways, we'll go ahead and end this video here. Again, for any specific information on any of these knives, check out the uh, individual reviews. I will make sure. Let's see, I've already filmed. The review for this knife is already published. I have the review for this one filmed and scheduled at the time of recording. You can check out my Kaiser Beg Ladder XL video. I have a couple of other button lock videos. I'm going to be working on the review of this one. I'll make sure the review of this knife comes out before this video. So definitely check out all those for, you know, individual thoughts on the knives. Because I do like, you know, all the knives I show in this video, I do like uh, quite a bit. So, but yeah, there's my thoughts. Button locks, they're cool. I'm not sure they're my thing. And I'm not sure I would choose a button lock over any other type of lock. But I would love to hear your thoughts. Tell me down in the comments below whether you love button locks, hate them, or just kind of are on the fence. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I've been Gideon. I'll see you in the next one. Adios.